Picture this. It's an exciting day at the office. The new Meraki MXs you ordered just arrived in the mail today, just in time for your ASA to MX migration project. The planning's already done, and you're excited to get these Meraki MXs deployed and rolled out ASAP. The only problem? Well, you have a thousand firewall rules spread across multiple ACLs configured in your ASA. Now, how do we migrate these over from the ASA to the MX? We could do it manually, and that sounds like a pain. We could also pay a partner to do it for us in a paid service engagement. Or we can take advantage of the Meraki APIs to programmatically move these rules over from the ASA to the MX. We had a customer that was facing this exact same problem, and we opted for the last solution, where we built a custom Python scripting-based tool that leveraged Meraki APIs, read in the rule set from the ASA, and programmatically created those rules on the MX. Let's take a look at the tool that we built and how it was able to save the customer tons of time and frustration. Let's begin by looking at the Meraki dashboard. Here we're under the Security Nesty WAN Firewall tab, and we can see that in our current environment, we don't have any rules configured. So no inbound, no outbound rules. We also don't have any layer seven or NAT mappings defined. So we're starting with a completely fresh environment. And let's discuss some of the inputs and configuration parameters needed before running the code. In terms of input, there's two text files that are required. The first is the result of show access list on your ASA saved to a text file. And the second is the result of show run from your ASA saved into a text file. From a configuration standpoint, there's only a few things that need to be configured. The Meraki API key, your organization and network name that contains the MX you're migrating to, as well as the ACL types if you have multiple ACLs. So we see that each ACL can be one of two types. The first is the NAT set type. This is designed for ACLs that are really on the outside in interface. So it's gonna receive some special processing around one-to-one -one NAT as well as layer seven rule creation. And the second set is the outbound set. So this is for all remaining ACLs that are on, for example, an inside interface. And these rules will be placed in the outbound rules section on the Meraki dashboard. Once we're done with this, we can now run the code. We see that we need to specify the show run and the show access list. Let's run the code. We'll click yes to this because our VLANs and static routes are already configured on the dashboard. And then we'll also get the option for any source translation. So this is a advanced feature that's described in more details in the readme. For now, we'll say no. And then we see that we're first gonna create our objects and our object groups. So these are the same things as the network objects and network object groups in the ASA. So we're able to translate those to Meraki. Once we're done with that, we'll begin processing the rules. And we see that we have now created 84 outbound rules, 18 NAT rules, and eight layer seven rules using the subset of rules that we migrated over today. Back on the Meraki dashboard, we can now see the results of the script that we just ran. This isn't the real rule data, but will hopefully show some sample rules that could be created as a result of the script. If we look at the outbound rules section, this is where we can see the first type of rule that may be created. We see this rule here is TCP. It uses a source object and a destination object group, and it has a comma separated group of ports here. This is what a typical outbound rule will look like. If we scroll down, we can see the results of the layer seven rule creation, as well as the one-to-one -one NAT creation. For layer seven, you'll typically see a deny policy for a remote IP range with some IP. And then for the one-to-one -one NAT mapping, you'll see a rule that looks something like this, again, with the public IP and the local IP coming from those input files, and then a list of allowed inbound connections, which could be any or a list of remote IPs. That concludes the demo. For more information about this use case and to access the code, please see the GitHub URL in the description below. You'll also find the GitHub for the DevNet organization in the description below to access more exciting Cisco programmability use cases. Thanks for watching.